Hey, how's it going? I'm Eric, and recently I bought the Canon EFS 10-22mm wide-angle lens. Frankly, I think I waited too long to invest in a wide-angle lens, mainly because of the cost. If you're new to DSLR photography or videography, you're probably using a camera that has a small sensor known as APS-C, which is a format uh, used by the Canon Rebel line and the Nikon D3000 series. My camera is a T2i. The thing that these cameras all have in common is that they're smaller, lighter, less expensive, and have an APS-C sensor. In the case of Canon, the crop factor is 1.62, which means if you buy an EFS lens, the viewing angle that you end up with is narrower than a full-frame format camera. So this lens takes pictures that are as wide as a 16 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter camera. So if you're in the market for your first DSLR, definitely consider a Canon Rebel or a Nikon D3000. But don't be fooled by the focal length of the kit lens that comes with it. The 18 to 55 millimeter lens that I got for the T2i is an amazing lens for the price, but it's not wide angle. I've honestly had a great time shooting with this lens. It is now far and away my favorite lens and makes whole classes of shots possible that I couldn't have done before. It's great for landscape, for multiple subjects, even video selfies. It is a must for shooting in indoor spaces. This bathroom's floor is about the size of its door, making it impossible to shoot otherwise. One of the reasons why this lens is a little bit more expensive is that it has an excellent, very fast autofocus. One of the things to remember is that this line of cameras can't autofocus while the mirror is down, meaning if you're taking a video, there's no autofocus happening in the middle of the video. Not that you would necessarily want it, it was difficult to use the LCD in order to do manual focus because the focus indicator has markers that go from less than a foot all the way up to one meter and then it's got a mushy range from there to infinity and it can be difficult especially with so many important details that you might have in a wide shot to tell from the LCD screen whether they're all in focus. There are other effects of going wide that I hadn't thought about much until now. First of all, the obvious, if your subject is far away, it's not gonna work. Wide angles exaggerate the size of close things and the smallness of far things. This sounds like a no-brainer, but it can be surprising. It will make your dog's legs look stumpy or make the moon look tiny or exaggerate the proportions and angles of anything that protrudes towards the camera. The trick is to use this to your advantage. I found that when I was shooting, I had to think more about my position relative to the subject and my immediate surroundings and think much less about exactly where I pointed the camera. With a narrow lens, it's the opposite. You can take thousands of totally different photos without moving, and moving one step forward or back will barely change them. But with a wide lens, your shots will still include mostly the same objects. But if you just take one step in any direction, the content of all of the near field areas of your photo will be radically changed and how close you are to your subject will radically change how they fit into the space. So to recap, lenses for crop sensors, like in entry-level DSLRs, are not as wide as the focal length listed would indicate. Adding a wide-angle lens will open up a lot of new possibilities. But more than that, I just had a great time using it, and it made me think a little bit differently about photography. I've already posted a couple of videos that take advantage of this lens, and there are more coming, so don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. That's legitimate.